Good morning, Baton Rouge. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. As the Chief of Police, I have the great honor of serving the citizens of Baton Rouge and the immense privilege of leading the dedicated men and women of the Baton Rouge Police Department. Today, I have the opportunity to give voice to their efforts through this message. While the Baton Rouge Police serves as the primary enforcer of public safety laws in our city, we know that every citizen, every resident plays a role in keeping our city safe and that problems in our community are best resolved when we work together. Thus, trust and community partnerships are at the heart of our ideology and strategies, and we will continue working to keep you informed, to listen to your concerns, and to partner with you on our mission to serve and protect the citizens of Baton Rouge and all of those who visit our great city. It was requested that I speak on crime ahead of our summer when kids will be out of school and on recruitment efforts at the Baton Rouge Police Department. If I may, I would like to begin with the latter. Nationally, recruitment and retention has been a challenge for law enforcement agencies all across America. Today, we have about 100 police vacancies within a department. We average 50 vacancies a year over the past decade. As our recruiting efforts progress and we continue to, build, to fill vacancies within a department, we are confident we will have more boots on the ground than we've had in many years. I want to thank the Baton Rouge Police Department's recruitment team for their efforts uh, in working with our community to identify uh, young men and women who chose to serve in our community. And we are achieving this goal without compromising any qualifications or any standards in the hiring process. The 87th Basic Training Academy graduated uh, last month. The 88th Basic Training Academy is scheduled to begin in a couple of weeks. As of today, I've signed about 29 uh, hires that are going to start the academy. So that's 29, and we have around seven or eight that are going through background checks for the next post academy. So we are excited about where we're going uh, in our recruiting efforts, and we've already begun accepting applications for the 89th Basic Training Academy. So I want to thank Baton Rouge. I want to thank the citizens of Baton Rouge for uh, joining us and helping us in our recruitment strategy. Those young officers who are coming on the job need the equipment and the tools to do their job. That's why I, I really want to thank our president I want to thank our city council and our mayor for approving uh, the Amer American Rescue Plan dollars that have been uh, provided uh, to this city. You know, the direct support uh, from our federal partners to a local government has really helped the city of Baton Rouge, especially coming off of 2020 when uh, there were stressful times, when there was some economic hardship. Uh, being experienced by our community. And what is that direct support has done? It has purchased more than 170 uh, vehicles that we've ordered. Purchase of technology in our real-time crime center. Purchasing of uh, cameras, part of our camera share program to strategically place cameras in the city of areas of concern. License plate readers to help in our investigative efforts. Those are the things that, some small things, there was also some uh, infrastructure issues uh, that, that we're going to be using those funds for, but to have the ability to have that, those funds uh, directly uh, given to local government really helped us in where we are today as a police agency and as a city as a whole. So where are we today as it relates to crime? There is no singular, one-size-fits-all approach to crime. It's a complex issue. 
And there isn't anything easy about policing in America today. Crime is a social economic issue. But enforcement is a very, very critical part of public safety and criminals must be held accountable. They must be held accountable. When we look at the first uh, five months of this year, 678 firearms seized on the streets of Baton Rouge from our police officers. 1,536 were taken off the streets last year in 2021. Our narcotics and street crime unit have executed 55 search warrants this year, 109 search warrants since 2020. They've taken $94,680 in 22 cents from drug dealers this year, 1.3 million since 2020. We've made 1,642 arrests this year for the first uh, five, four, five months of this year. Drag racing. It is unfortunate that we have a small group of people who think it's funny, who think it's cool, who think it's okay to recklessly drive up on the highways and byways of this city. I am telling you that is unacceptable. We have a specialized unit that works alongside our partners at the EPR Sheriff's Office. Since we started this unit last year, they seized 400, they've issued 400 citations, 89 vehicles were towed, and 27 guns were seized. Seven of those guns was rifled, and that's the 2021 data from that unit, and they're still operational today, uh, making key arrests in very specific areas. As it relates to homicides, they're down around 10% compared to last year. As of today, 49 people were murdered in our city this year. Five of those homicides were domestic related. And we've also had three negligent or justifiable homicides. We've responded to more than 80,000 calls for service the first quarter of this year. We average more than 200,000 calls for service a year. What I want to reassure the community is that the men and women of the Baton Rouge Police Department were working, working very close with all law enforcement agencies in East Baton Rouge Parish and the city of Baton Rouge. And who are those law enforcement agencies that we are working with? They're housed here in our city. They are the Drug Enforcement Administration, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearm, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the U.S. Marshal Service, Secret Service, Louisiana State Police, Probation and Parole, the East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office. And we are also working with neighboring police departments, not only in the city, but also in neighboring parishes, as well as neighboring sheriff's office, because our jurisdictional uh, lines restrict on where we can go and what we can do outside of the city. But we are the only ones who care about that. I promise you the criminals can care less about jurisdictional lines. They don't care if they're in the city. They don't care if they're in this parish or another parish. And that's why we're working very close with our neighboring agencies to make sure that we continue to identify uh, those individuals who are responsible for violent crime in our community. We started Operation Red Stick at the beginning of the year. And we are seeing that that operation is yielding key arrests in specific areas of our city involving key individuals and gangs that are involved in drugs and violent crime in our city. Uh, just this morning in a briefing with my senior staff, I was briefed on uh, an operation Friday that yielded just about every drug you can think of was seized in that operation, as well as some operations with our partners at ATF from an operation within the past two weeks. I can't speak into the specifics on those operations because I don't want to compromise the integrity on the great work that we're doing with our federal partners and our neighboring agencies. But as I stated before uh, in previous uh, press conferences and statements, we will be releasing 
uh, the results of this operation in July. The enforcement piece that I just talked about, we are putting individuals in jail. That's 1,600 felonies that I talked about earlier. We are putting individuals in jail. But the enforcement piece is only one part of a public safety ecosystem. There's the prevention. There's the intervention. There's the developing relationships with the community because we need them to cooperate. We need them to come forward. We need them to be witnesses. And as we break down barriers in community police relations, we see that cooperation increasing. We see them helping us. In our community conversations, when we do community walks every week, this week, on the 9th of June, we're going to be at Flannery in Goodwood at 3 p.m. Please come out and join us in our community walk. Not only do we talk about crime, we talk about uh, other uh, public safety issues and quality of life issues. We've already identified more than 50 blighted properties from our walks. We hear from community residents about who the bad actors are in the community or where the bad locations are in their neighborhood. Please come out and be part of that process. This is why we not only invest in the enforcement piece of our job, but also in the community relations piece. That's why you see uh, the Baton Rouge Police Department began the Citizens Academy. And we are proud of our first Citizens Academy and all of those who participated in the process, thank you. Because not only do they learn about how we police in Baton Rouge, we hear from the citizens. Uh, they're part of the process in identifying solutions on how we can be better at our craft. But they also become a voice. We live in a time and age when there's so much misinformation that's out there on social media, so much information that people believe and to have our graduates from our uh, Citizens Academy out there correcting misinformation about the Baton Rouge Police Department. That's why we invest heavily in our foundation where we are now a part of, we started the PAL program, the Police Athletic League, where we're working with kids uh, during the summer and all year round to make sure that they're active and engaged in positive uh, uh, activities. I'll fight the blight. More than 230 vehicles towed and 400 plus removed from properties in our area. Our support and position on the Bridge Center for Hope, where we, our first responders, have taken more than 700 persons or individuals in our community who were experiencing a mental health crisis. And now they're getting the proper care that they need so they can be productive, law-abiding citizens in our community. The prevention and intervention piece must be a community-based approach that aligns resources and fruitful partnerships between diverse stakeholders to accelerate programs on complex social conditions, policies, and strategies that advance health, public safety and wellness in the entire Baton Rouge community. And that is exactly what the mayor's safe, hopeful, healthy Baton Rouge initiative does. It's stabilizing individuals, youth, family, and community, creating culture of health, creating equitable community development, and at the same time supporting law enforcement in our efforts on the enforcement piece where we are working together to identify the criminals who are responsible for the crime in our community. We are offering resources and services to our youth this summer, to families, and to the community as a whole. There's job placement programs for youth in the summer months. There are programs that are empowering parents, families, and guardians to take control of what's going on in their homes. 
We are offering resources and services to families who may be at risk or have been impacted by violence as well. There's the street engagement piece where we have young trained individuals out there who understand conflict resolution and de-escalation that can work with families to help with beef or differences that individuals may have or groups may have to prevent the next shooting from happening. Joy and hope events will be scheduled this whole summer. Please go to summer of hopebr.com. That is summer of hopebr.com. Get involved in the process. There will be panels and conversations where we listen and we learn. A lot of the services that we talk about, domestic violence. When we look at last year, we had more domestic violence homicides than we've ever had in our parish. And right now, when I look at the data at this pace, we are uh, around the same numbers we were last year, given one or two. Domestic violence, we've seen this increase since 2020 when survivors were locked in the houses with their abusers. When we shut, they couldn't go to work, they couldn't go to their meetings. Please, if you know someone who was a victim of domestic violence, please, please get them help. We have the Iris Society, we have the Butterfly Society and Iris, two partners that are out there. And addiction. I talked about the Bridge Center for Hope, where you can drop off anyone who's experiencing a mental health crisis, just like law enforcement does. You can drive up and get help. I just got a call the other day from someone in New Orleans who said he reached out to a friend in Baton Rouge who was experiencing depression and was on this downward spiral with their health and didn't know what to do. And I said, have them call the Bridge Center for Hope. And we made arrangements so that person can go get the help that they need. And I got a little feedback. She's doing okay. She's doing okay. That's what the Bridge Center for Hope is there for. But we need people in our community to take advantage of the resources that have been given to them. Our community street teams, if you're a parent, if you're a mother out there and you know your son is involved in group or gang violence, you know that your loved one may have communicated to you or another family member that he's beefing with someone. one 877 br cst one eight seven seven nine nine B R C S T or info at B R C S T dot org. Someone is waiting. A trained professional is waiting to come and meet with you and your family to help get that young person out of that situation. To help mitigate whatever they're going through. There's help. Please take advantage of these services. Baton Rouge, I understand the emotions and the fear that you feel every time you hear about a violent incident that has happened in this community. I get that. I understand that. We get the calls. As I'm standing here right now, my phone is going off. And it's from dispatch. And more than likely, it's going to be a violent event because I get every time there's a homicide in our community, not only do I get a call, but our mayor president gets a call as well. But what I want you to know is that we are working hard. The men and women of the Baton Rouge Police Department are working hard alongside our partners at the Sheriff's Office and all of those alphabet police that I mentioned earlier. They're working as well uh, hard with us as well. I am proud 
of the work that the men and women, the Baton Rouge Police Department are doing. When I look at peer agencies around the country, when I look at peer agencies just here in the capital area as well as in our state, I believe we have demonstrated that we are one of the leading law enforcement agencies in the city and in this, in, in this state and in this country. I do believe that. That's why we're going to continue asking you to help with the recruiting and also ask you to help us in our support to give our police officers the pay that they need. We make less than peer agencies. We've already done the study on that and completed that study. And I'm asking you to support that as well as we continue uh, to find young professionals who want to have careers in law enforcement. They are out there. They are coming. And we continue to encourage that. So if you know someone who has a heart to serve, it's GEAUXBRPD.com. That's GEAUXBRPD.com. That is our recruiting website. Please, if you know someone who has the heart to serve and understand the values of loyalty, duty, respect, honor, integrity, and personal courage, please lead them our way. We want their help. We need their help. And I believe as we continue to uh, fill those vacancies and, rank and, 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 and get the rank and file to where it hasn't been in many, many years, and we can continue to do those proactive uh, enforcement actions uh, that are part of our strategic plan. So thank you on behalf of the men and women of the Baton Rouge Police Department. I want to say thank you for your support. And we'll take questions now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, you talked about drag racing. Mm -hmm. Were you aware that a group of Baton Rouge drag racers went to New Orleans this weekend and did some stuff? So I, I am aware of an incident. Uh, I am aware that uh, several uh, law enforcement agencies, and I was briefed on this this morning in my deputy chief's meeting, have reached out to us um, asking um, um, about our operations and what we have done with this issue. Um, are we pushing them out to other areas because of our um, uh, enforcement actions? Uh, I don't know, but I'll tell you this. We are working, uh, we scheduled a meeting with one of our city council uh, members, I believe it's uh, Councilman Gode, uh, to look at how we can uh, increase uh, penalties as it relates to that law. And we will be going uh, before the legislative session next year, it's a little too late at this time, to look at how we can change that legislation uh, to put more penalties for those individuals who think this is funny, who think this is okay and don't realize the public safety issue that they present. And let me be clear, we're going to continue enforcing those laws and they come back, are we going to continue taking cars, are we going to continue uh, making arrests? And uh, we're going to work with those agencies uh, that have reached out to us to let them know some of the things we've done to slow those type of things happening in our city. Can you share any of those things? I'm sorry? Can you share any of those things? Well, look, zero uh, enforcement. Look, look when, when we when we go out there and, and, and you look at uh, this this type of behavior, there's going to be a zero tolerance for it, and you have to have a zero tolerance uh, for this. Um, you know, th those incidents like that can escalate to further a, a violent crime, and we've seen that unfortunately um, in some of the cases that we've had here. Uh, so we're going to be working with them. Um, uh, it, it provides both a proactive and a covert. Uh, investigative uh, effort, which has allowed us to make some key arrests in those incidents that happened here in Baton Rouge. What is your message to them? What is your message to them, the drivers? Oh, stop it. Look, we're not going to tolerate this here. We're going to continue when we learn about it. We're going to continue to enforce it. And uh, our officers uh, understand that. Uh, zero tolerance for that type of behavior in our city. We will not tolerate it.
You mentioned that homicides were down uh, 10%. That is correct. And that's compared to this year, this time, last year, around this time? That is correct. So what do you think is, is um, obviously you all have done some work with partners and things like that, and we're going into the summer uh, season, so what are you hoping to do to try to limit some of this violence? Because I know we, we had a, it's been about a week we've been in the summer, and we've already seen a few homicides happen this past weekend. Yeah, I think we, we had one homicide, I believe, this weekend. I mean, we've had, violent crime. Yeah, yeah we've, uh, I think we've had two homicides the month of June uh, this month. Uh, continue focusing our enforcement. You know, um, the, the, the accountability piece, look, if you look at uh, the number of arrests that we're making, uh, I believe when I last look at, uh, we were right around a 56, maybe 57 percent clearance uh, rate, uh, which was around national average numbers. Uh, putting those actors in jail. Um, there's room for improvement in all parts of the system. What does accountability look like? Accountability is when we arrest somebody for a crime and then they go to jail, even if they bond out, they have, they have to go to trial or they have to plead. That's the accountability when they're locked up and they're no longer terrorizing our community. And we are working with our partners to try to um, um, look at areas of improvement, and we have seen some, but we're going to continue putting them in jail. Um, um, but, but there has to be uh, some accountability in, in expediting uh, these violent offenders through the system. Um, out of the 1,600 people that you have arrested this year, yes, ma'am. How many are let go? I don't have that data. I don't have that data. Now, when you say let go, what do you mean by let well, go? Well, I mean, when you look at repeat offenders, mm -hmm. and they, they, the judge has let them off. They didn't prosecute them. They, did, they were let go. Um, that's, that's my question. I mean. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the, the data for that 1,600. Uh, but, but I think we've, you've heard us say before that in many of these cases, uh, particularly uh, the gun violence, we're seeing the same individuals uh, again. Um, and there's a process, and, and I think that what we're experiencing, and I believe it's what the entire country is experiencing, because this isn't unique to the city of Baton Rouge. We're seeing this everywhere. Uh, uh, look at this weekend, how many mass shootings we've had uh, around the United States, and then the weekend before that. Uh, so we know when it comes to violence in, in America, we, we've seen this happen in, in 2020. You know, we, we don't think about when we shut down a country all of the accountability piece, all of the individuals that were waiting to go to trial, they didn't go to trial. Those who were in drug court, who had to take drug tests, probation and parole, who had to go out there, all of that's accountability uh, pieces of the person who's suffering from that monster called addiction. When we look at the fentanyl, uh, uh, the, the overdoses, and fentanyl is the key ingredient in the overdoses here. And what do people use to cope with the stresses that are going on? And look, a, a lot of those issues were exacerbated in uh, disinvested communities, not only here, but all over America, because like I said earlier, crime is a socioeconomic issue. But we've seen these changes happen in 2020. I think that some systems are backed up. Uh, I, I hope as we begin to get back to normality in the court system as it re relates to those cases that have been backed up uh, for so long, that we'll start seeing more accountability for those individuals. Uh, Chief, following up on that, the, the mayor of Redmond in, in an op ed in the paper that the, the 19th JDC was not uh, uh, moving as expeditiously in the fabrics as she would like. Uh, what is your view of that, and uh, is there a, a ramping up of that part of the system? Well, I, I, I think I, I share um, the mayor's frustration when it comes to that. I can tell you that our mayor president want crime stop tomorrow. Um, she, she wants enforcement. She wants the accountability piece to that. But I think that that question should be uh, directed to uh, those uh, institutions that are responsible uh, for that. You have the courts. You also have the prosecution side of that. We talk about this ecosystem, right? Law enforcement is only one part of this entire system of, of public safety. So yes, I think we all would like to see those individuals who have been arrested for murders, those individuals who have been arrested for shooting incidents and violent crimes in our community, 
those cases expedited, yes. So, Chief, um, can you get this story here straight? You're supposed to be arresting one of your ex-police uh, officer. Now he was working in, in Livingston Parish because he had stolen some guns uh, from evidence, and Central had found the guns over there. Chief Roderick had found the guns, and, and you, you're supposed to have made some deal with him. He's supposed to come in and turn himself in. You never turned yourself in yet? And other officers kind of cover for him a little bit? I'm trying to be respectful in my words because I was not expecting that question. I'm going to be quite, quite, quite honest with you. Um, th there is a, uh, an investigation going on. Um, uh, well, we were working with the Central Police Department uh, for several weeks on an investigation. I was advised this morning that uh, warrants uh, have been obtained for the ex-police officer uh, and that uh, those warrants have been forwarded to the U.S. Marshal Service so that they can apprehend. Please don't. I, I, it's an ongoing investigation right now. I'm not going to give you any name or anything like that. Uh, I want to be respectful of the process. Um, um, the Central Chief of Police did advise me that he would like to do a press conference once that investigation was concluded. Uh, and obviously I was thrown a little bit by that. You asking me that question, uh, I was briefed on that this morning. But at the appropriate time, we will give all the details related to that. I mean, how, how did it make you feel kids have found guns that belongs to you? Well, I, I, think, I think if you look at our investigative efforts and uh, what our investigate Gators um, did in that investigation and got the warrant and accountability. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, it's concerning. It's very concerning on what could have happened, especially when we talk about some of the shootings uh, that have happened at schools and guns at schools. We're fortunate that that didn't happen in this case. We are fortunate that it was good kids who found it, who had a good mother who called law enforcement and allowed the Central Police Department to take possession of that. Please, no more questions, if you will, on, on the, the, the specifics of that case. I want to be respectful of the process. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of property crimes, uh, particularly property crimes against businesses? Is it going up, going down, staying about the same? Yeah, we were looking at those numbers uh, this morning. Um, we, 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 we talked this morning, just probably the last two weeks is when we uh, probably saw some of the largest decreases, particularly like in robberies. Uh, we saw, saw that. There's still a little tick in burglaries. Um, we, we think that we made some key arrests. Uh, we had some um, 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 robberies and burglaries that were occurring in, in the Garden District. Um, we dedicated uh, investigative resources to that. We were able to make some key arrests. We believe that those arrests uh, um, are, were, were key in uh, uh, seeing the numbers we're seeing now in robberies where they're actually down and, and we hadn't seen that um, uh, for, for a few uh, weeks. Uh, also, another key arrest yesterday uh, involving juveniles that are involved in a robbery. We made that. I was briefed on that one as well. So. Um, we, we, w one of the things we do, you probably saw social media uh, live, I uh, believe it was Friday, we did that for the first time. And in that social media live post, we talked about a specific area in the city that we were seeing some increases in. And we identified that area uh, off of government, I believe in Foster, uh, where we were seeing some, some effort. So we engaged the community and asked them to be vigilant, make sure the cameras were working. Uh, if they see something, make sure they call us, uh, that they will see uh, a law enforcement presence. Um, uh, part of our operation, uh, our community walk uh, this week, uh, we will cover some areas. Our community walks that we do weekly or are strategically planned uh, based on data. So we are seeing a little uptick, just, just a little bit, but we believe uh, there are going to be some reductions next time with some of these key arrests that we just made. But uh, we got to be vigilant. Look, make sure your camera's working. You got cameras working. Um, a lot of, everybody likes to go out of town and travel during the summer. 
we're asking, please, don't tell your business on social media. Don't share that on social media. Post your pictures when you get back. Make sure you're communicating uh, with your neighbors, uh, letting them know that you're going to be out of town, making sure that they're looking out for you. I could tell you a key piece of evidence is video evidence. And I'm telling you that the video evidence we're getting, uh, which helped us in some of these uh, recent ones, like when we talk about the Garden District, they're very critical in identifying suspects and getting convictions. Yes, no. Oh, so, so all the juveniles are not necessarily tied directly to a gang okay. or, or a group. Uh, there are some. Uh, there is uh, some truth to what you're saying that we are seeing where there are adult offenders who are using uh, some of the young offenders or juveniles to commit crimes for them. Um, so, so we are aware of that, and um, uh, that is also part of our investigative efforts. And we have made some arrests. Yes, sir. Chief, uh, in Baton Rouge, how many bad actors are there really, in your estimation, percentage-wise, the population, or about like hundreds or thousands or whatever? How many bad actors are there really out here in your opinion? Yeah, so when we talk about violent crime, you hear us talk about that 6%. Uh, I still believe uh, when it comes to violence that uh, the, the, the number of individuals involved in violent crime that are committing the violent crimes uh, are still going to be uh, in that uh, six percent uh, uh, area. Uh, we've had conversations as of lately if those numbers are increasing. Uh, don't have the data to really uh, uh, support that piece of it, uh, but I think it's still going to be around that you know six six percent area. Most of our people who live here are good law-abiding citizens, good law-abiding citizens, even in the, uh, the, 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 the areas we would call. Uh, high crime area uh, areas of concern. But that's still several thousand bad actors, right? Uh, you, you, that's six percent of the two hundred thousand residents, two hundred what thirty, twenty, forty thousand residents that live here. Yes, excuse me, Chief. Want to have time for uh, one more question? Chief, uh, I know that the district attorney has spoken about. Um, kind of its growing problem of automatic weapons, um, lock switches, and these kinds of devices. Is this a new problem, and how are the people who have those devices getting them? Well, they're, they're, they're getting them through so different, many different, um, um, you can get them online, uh, you can get it uh, off the streets, but yeah, it's a problem. You know, we don't need fully automatic weapons on the streets of Baton Rouge. It's just simply no use for it. But I think, you know, when you, when, you, when you talk about common sense laws that uh, I believe as a chief of police could be uh, uh, looked at, uh, nobody really wants to touch gun laws. And, and, and that's, that's, uh, that's one of the um, disappointments in uh, what's going on in America right now because, look, there, there, there are changes that can be made that doesn't interfere with the rights of good law-abiding citizens and can still make us uh, safer as a community and as a country. But nobody wants to touch anything to do with gun laws. What are the specific changes you would advocate for? The president listed some of them. Thank you.